Hello everyone, I'm Josh Salucci from Tack Raven Solutions and welcome to the Tack Raven Solutions DOS and DDoS attack lesson. Let's get started. What's a DDoS attack? And what's a DDoS attack? And what's the difference? A DOS attack is a denial of service attack where a computer is used to flood a server with TCP and UDP packets. A DDoS attack is where multiple systems target a single system with a DOS attack or denial of service. The targeted network is then bombarded with packets from multiple locations. Denial of service and distributed denial of service DDoS attacks are two of the most intimidating threats that modern enterprises face. Few forms of attack can have the financial ramifications as that of a successful DOS attack. Security surveys indicate that the cost of a DDoS attack averages between $20,000 to $40,000 per hour. This is an astronomical figure and can put even the largest organizations under pressure. During this type of attack, the service is put out of action as the packets are sent over to the network to overload the server's capabilities and make the server unavailable to other devices and users throughout the network. DOS attacks are used to shut down individual machines and networks so that they can be used by other users. Here are a number of ways that DOS attacks can be used. These include the following. Buffer overflow attacks. This type of attack is the most common DOS attack experienced. Under this attack, the attacker overloads a network address with traffic so that it puts it out of use. The next one is ping of death or ICMP flood. An ICMP flood attack is used to take unconfigured or misconfigured network devices and use them to send spoof packets to sping every computer within the target network. This is also known as the ping of death or pod attack. The SYN flood or the SYN flood. This attack sends requests to connect to a server, but doesn't complete the handshake. The end result is that the network becomes inundated with connection requests that prevent anyone from connecting to that specific network. Lastly, teardrop attack. During a teardrop DOS attack, an attacker sends IP data packet fragments to a network. The network then attempts to recompile these fragments into their original packets. The process of compiling these fragments exhausts the system and ends up crashing. It crashes because the fields are designed to confuse the system so that it cannot put them back together. The ease with which DOS attacks can be coordinated has meant that they have become one of the most pervasive cybersecurity threats that modern organizations have to face. DOS attacks are simple but effective and can bring about devastating damage to the companies or individuals they are aimed at. With one attack, an organization can be put out of action for days or even weeks. The time an organization spends offline adds up. Being unable to access the network costs organizations thousands every year. Data may not be lost, but the disruption to service and downtime can be massive. Preventing DOS attacks is one of the basic requirements of staying protected in the modern age. The reason for this is that there is a large number of machines at the attacker's disposal, and it becomes difficult for the victim to pinpoint the origin of the attack. In addition, using a DDoS attack makes it more complicated for the victim to recover. Nine times out of ten, the systems used to execute DDoS attacks have been compromised so that the attacker can launch attacks remotely through the use of slave computers. These slave computers are referred to as zombies or bots. These bots form a network of connected devices called a botnet that is managed by the attacker through a command and control server. The command and control server allows the attacker or bot master to coordinate attacks. Botnets can be made, made up of anywhere between a handful of bots to hundreds of different bots. Now let's look at the different broad types of DOS and DDoS attacks. There are a number of broad categories that DOS attacks fall into for taking networks offline. These come in the form of volumetric attacks, and these are classified as any form of attack where a target's network's bandwidth resources are deliberately consumed by an attacker. 
Once network bandwidth has been consumed, it is unavailable to legitimate devices and users within the network. Volumetric attacks occur when the attacker floods the network devices with ICMP echo requests until there is no more bandwidth available. The next type is fragmentation attacks, which are any kind of attack that forces a network to reassemble manipulated network packets. During a, fragmented, during a fragmation attack, the attacker sends manipulated packets to a network so that once the network tries to reassemble them, they cannot be re reassembled. This is because the packets have more packet header information than, is, than what is permitted. The end result is packet leaders, which are too large to reassemble in bulk. Next, the TCP state exhaustion attacks. In a TCP state exhaustion attack, the attacker targets a web server or firewall in an attempt to limit the number of connections that they can make. The idea behind this style of attack is to push the device to the limit of the number of concurrent connections. Last one here is going to be application layer attacks. Application layer or layer 7 attacks are attacks that target applications or servers in an attempt to use up resources by creating as many processes and transactions as possible. Application layer attacks are particularly difficult to detect and address because they don't need many machines to launch an attack. Now what are the most common forms of DDoS attacks? As you can see, DDoS attacks are the more complex of the two threats because they can use a range of devices that increase the severity of the attacks. Being attacked by, a, by one computer is not the same as being attacked by a botnet of 100 devices. Part of being prepared for DDoS attacks is being familiar with as many different attack forms as you can. We're going to look at these a little bit further in detail so that you can see these attacks and how they're used to damage enterprise networks. Let's go over some of the, some of the different types or forms. Ping of death or pod. During a ping of death attack, the attacker sends multiple pings to one computer. Pod of death or ping of death attacks use manipulated packets to send packets to the network which have IP packets that are larger than the maximum packet length. These illegitimate packets are sent as fragments. Once the victim's network attempts to reassemble these packets, uh, network resources, the network resources are used up. They are unavailable to legitimate packets. This grinds the network target network to a halt and takes it completely out of action. UDP floods. A UDP flood is a DDoS attack that floods the victim's network with user datagram protocol packets, also known as UDP. The attacks work by flooding ports on a remote host so that the host keeps looking for an application listening at the port. When the host discovers that there is no application, it replies with a packet that says destination wasn't reachable. This consumes network resources and means that other devices cannot connect properly. The ping flood. Much like the UDP flood attack, a ping flood attack uses ICMP echo request or ping packets to derail a network surface. service. The attacker sends these packets rapidly with, without waiting for a reply in an attempt to make the target network unreachable through brute force. These attacks are particularly concerning because bandwidth is consumed both ways, with attacked servers trying to reply with their own ICMP echo reply packets. The end result is a decline in speed across the entire network. SYN flood attacks are another type of DOS attack where the attacker uses the TCP connection sequence to make the victim's network unavailable. The attacker sends SYN requests to the victim's network, which then responds with a SYN ACK response. The sender then is supposed to respond with an acquisition or acknowledgement response, but instead the attacker doesn't respond or uses a spoofed up source IP address to send a SYN request instead. Every request that goes unanswered takes up network resources until no devices can make a connection. Next up, Slow Loris. Slow Loris is a type of DDoS attack software that was originally developed by Robert Hansen or RSnake to take down web servers. A Slow Loris attack occurs when the attacker sends partial HTTP requests with no intention of completing them. 
To keep the attack going, Slow Loris periodically sends HTTP headers for each request to keep the computer's network resources tied up. This continues until the server can't make any more connections. This form of attack is used by attackers because it doesn't require any bandwidth. Next up, HTTP flood. In an HTTP flood attack, the attacker uses HTTP GET or POST request to launch an assault on an individual's web server or application. HTTP floods are a layer 7 attack and don't use malformed or spoofed packets. Attackers use this type of attack because they require less bandwidth than other attacks to take the victim's network out of operation. Lastly, zero day attacks. Zero day attacks are attacks that exploit vulnerabilities that have yet to be discovered. This is a blanket term for attacks that could be faced in the future. These types of attacks can be particularly devastating because the victim has no specific way to prepare them before experiencing a live attack. So now that we've covered these different types, what's the difference between a DOS and DDoS attack? The key difference between a DOS and DDoS attack is that the latter uses multiple interconnections, internet connections to put the victim's computer network offline, whereas the former uses a single connection. DDoS attacks are more difficult to detect because they are launched from multiple locations, so the victim can't tell the origin of the attack. Another key difference is the volume of attack leveraged, as a DDoS attack allows the attacker to send massive volumes of traffic to a single target network. It is important to note that DDoS attacks are execu executed differently than DOS attacks as well. DDoS attacks are executed through the use of botnets or networks of devices under the control of an attacker. In contrast, DOS attacks are generally launched through the use of script or a DOS tool like low orbit ion cannon. So why do DOS and DDoS attacks occur? Whether it is a DOS or DDoS attack, there are many nefarious reasons why an attacker would want to put a business offline. We'll look at some of the most common reasons why, uh, why D DDoS and DOS attacks are used to attack enterprises. Some of the common reasons include ransom, malicious competitors, uh, hacktivism, uh, causing trouble, and disgruntled employees. Out of these, hacktivism would probably be the term that would need to be highlighted. In many cases, the motivation for an attack won't be financial, but personal and political. It is not uncommon for a hacktivism group to put government and enterprise sites offline to mark their opposition. This can be for any reason that the attacker deems to be important, but often occurs due to political motivations. So how do you prevent DOS and DDoS attacks? Even though DOS attacks are a constant threat to modern organizations, they are a a number of diff there are a number of different steps that you can take to stay protected before and after an attack. Before implement implementing a protection strategy, it is vital to recognize that you won't be able to prevent every DOS attack that comes your way. That being said, you will be able to minimize the damage of a successful attack that does come your way. Minimizing the damage of incoming attacks comes down to three things preemptive measures, test run DOS attacks on your network, and then post attack response. Preemptive measures like network monitoring are intended to help you identify attacks before they take your system offline and act as a barrier toward being attacked. Likewise, test running DOS attacks allows you to test your defenses against DOS attacks and refine your overall strategy. Your post attack response will determine how much damage a DOS attack does and is a strategy to get your organization back up and running after a successful attack. Let's look at preemptive measures. So monitoring your network is one of the best preemptive measures steps you can take. Monitoring regular traffic will allow you to see the signs of an attack before the service goes down completely. By monitoring your traffic, you'll be able to take action the moment you see anything unusual in your data traffic. This can be the difference between being taken offline or staying up. Let's look at test running your DOS attacks. Unfortunately, you won't be able to prevent every DOS attack that comes your way. However, you can make sure you're prepared once an attack arrives. One of the most direct ways to do this is to simulate a DDoS attack against your own network. Simulating attack allows you to test out your current preventative method methods and helps you build up some real-time prevention strategies that can save lots of money if a real attack ever comes your way. Post-attack. 
If an attack gets off the ground, then you need to have a plan ready to run damage control. A clear plan can be the difference between an attack that is inconvenient and one that is devastating. As part of a plan, you want to designate roles to, the, to your members of your team who will be responsible for responding once an attack happens. This includes designing procedures for customer support so that customers aren't left high and dry while you're dealing with all the technical concerns. So DDoS attacks and DOS attacks, they're really a man manageable menace. There are a few service attacks as concerning as DOS attacks to the modern organizations. While having data stolen can be extremely damaging, having your service terminated by brute force attack brings with it a whole host of other complications that need to be dealt with. Just a day's worth of downtime can have a substantial financial impact on organization. Having a familiarity with the types of DOS and DDoS attacks that you can encounter will go a long way towards minimizing the damage of attacks. At the very least, you want to make sure that you have a network monitoring tool so that you can detect unusual traffic that indicates a potential attack. Though, if you're serious about addressing DOS attacks, then you'll need to make sure that you have a plan to respond after the attack. DOS attacks have become one of the most popular forms of cyber attack in the world because they are so easy to execute. As such, it is incredibly important to be proactive and implement as many measures as you can to prevent attacks and respond to attacks if they are successful. In doing so, you will limit your losses and leave yourself in a position where you can return to normal operations as quickly as possible. Thank you everyone for listening to this lesson. This is Josh Salucci from TAC Raven Solutions. Please like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.